Yo guys, what's going on? It is your boy from the land down under, Jetman99 here, bringing you a brand new LDL Season 7. Week 2, Power Rankings. Yes, it is late, I'm sorry. Uh, I would take the blame for this because I have uni and it's killed me in a sense. But, uh, but today, uh, I'm lucky enough to be joined for the second week in a row by the Blazing Squid. What a do, players and trainers. Glad to be back. But it's your boy, the Blazing Squid. Hey, so, so okay, okay, so Squid, uh, sum up this week in this week in wow in words. like okay, in, in in five words, five words, sum it up. Five words. Yeah. I would have to say. Yikes! Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I thought it was amazing. Yep. <laughs> Uh, we have freezes. Hacks, yes. <laughs> three more, mate. Three more. Come on. Got nothing, I take it. Oh my god, the stall. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. I'll accept that. Yes. Oh. And. Give me one more. Give me one more. Come on. It's there somewhere. But it wasn't cringe. That's yeah. the time it was. Okay. Yeah, so I suppose. It work for it. Disappointing. I'll go with disappointing. Okay. Disappointing in okay. my last word. There we go. Okay. So, I was actually check out uh, the standings at the, at the end of week two. Oh, I've just messed that up completely. Here we go. So, we have Stephen and Ramwood. Yeah, you know, Raymond came out on top. Uh, Anthony beat Alejandro. Arthur beat Jordan. Carlos beat Trig. Uh, Matt beat Mark. Uh, DJ beat myself. Uh, Brandon beat Chris. And then we had Che beat Brennan. So to the right, we have. Uh, are the, are the, are the most notable are uh, Ramwood, Carlos, and also Anthony all on 2 0 at the end of week two. So. Uh, so and they're off to an amazing start here. And then, okay, so now, uh, let's actually get into the rankings of, of, oh, from like 16 to 1 downwards, but we have from 9 to 16, to start. The squid, if you want to start. Start, Brennan. Oh my God. Salt Lake City Swampers, man. I, this is like the most disappointing game I have to watch this week. Yeah. Uh, very disappointing in the sense that um, so I talked to Brennan hmm? and uh, we know he's he's going through a lot right now he's going through a lot and I, I was watching the match and he was up 5-1 yes he was up 5-1 and I'm like how like are you serious my dude 5-1 and you lost against Shay lost one over here I, that's just like the reason like I, I know he's not the fact that you were up 5-1 I don't, I don't understand and, and yeah. the, uh, Brennan's level he, like he's good yeah he's cake for him that's cake yeah and he couldn't pull through it yeah. had to had to put him down on there like dude yeah. you're better than that I know you're better than that yeah and I need you to bounce back and that is the reason why that's me and the and the and the and that he's also at the number 16 spot because he choked. That's the only word for it. He choked. So, there, so there's nothing much that you can do about it now. You just have to move on. Oh my god, in a sense. Uh, uh, the, uh, the only way is up, basically. Sure. And it's my number 15. I actually had, uh, I actually had Chris. And... I feel as though that Brandon, uh, the, the, the whole game, eh, he should have like outplayed Chris. And there was nothing that, uh, and there was nothing that Chris could do in a sense, other than the fact that uh, Chris would have won if he had uh, if he had solar beam on his Charizard. He would have swept the Charizard and then won, because but so it was more of the lack of prep from Chris. Because I'm pretty sure that Brandon brought his 
uh, Brandon Brody's Pro Marina. Uh, uh, and at that point, I, uh, 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 I think it was like 3-2. Uh, and Brandon's last team on. Uh, where it was like it was like weeks of fire, and not at speed at the Charizard. So, as I've said, Solar Beam on this Charizard, he could have won it, and and that's why for me that he's at the number fifteen spot. And I have in number fifteen, I have Shea in the Lake Erie Gyarados. Uh, main reason I have Shea here was uh, it has to do with that battle against Brennan. Mm. Uh, I did notice, and I, I actually was talking to Brennan. This is Brennan's week one team. Legit. The same sets, the same lines from week one are in week two. If Shea had done his homework week one, yeah. At the position that he was at 5 1 week two. Mm. Like, you do your homework week one, dude. Yeah. So Shea did not do his homework. Actually, he was. He was not performing, and then Brennan had just choked, and that's the only reason he won. He won because Brennan yeah. choked and was hard with the Aurora Veil when he could have just easily gone for the kill and stuff like that. And yeah. it, the fact that Prep like didn't prep at all for his team week one, just brought the same lines and said, I'm gonna use it to the best advantage, and Shay the type of prep he used mm. to prepare, but like if you would have used week one's video for at least a little bit of intel, yeah, you would have had a much better and closer match than the one he had. Definitely. Team Chris, so I might as well give some of my input before we yeah. move on to Jordan. Definitely. Uh, yeah. So Chris, uh, Chris, saying he's had two losses, very hard to watch. Mm. Uh, one thing, like you mentioned, the, the solar beam. I, I really thought the solar beam was coming. Solar yes, beam is usually something so common on Charizard Y. Yeah. Uh, especially with Cream Arena and water types like that. Mm. But uh, I did like him trying. <laughs> the problem was he, he didn't have much for Zygarde. Yeah. Like Zygarde was setting up da Dragon Dances, and his only check to that was recycling his own Intimidate with Lando. With the Lando T. Like it was just mm. swap out Lando, sack something, bring it back in, sack something else, bring it back in, like, or switch it out. Like, just try to cycle the Intimidate to the best he could. To yeah. keep it neutralized, so I did like that, but I, I wish you had wish he had other methods to try to bring down Zygarde. Definitely. Yeah, that's really a, just one of the huge factors here. Like he, he did not really have a solid Zygarde check in that sense. Um, yeah. I, I believe Brandon noticed that with a Dragon Dance, he would have done so much better in Week One, and he he realized that brought that Week Two, mm. and Chris kind of underestimated that and. It kind of cost him the game there because Zygarde was like, I think he lost about two months just as Zygarde, or it, it, Zygarde put dents on his mons, which really, really crippled him. Yeah, but, Zygarde got but I feel like there. Chris, you can do so much better, especially for big threats like that. We have to prep, I, at least have two checks for it. Don't, don't try to just recycle those intimidates because you have to other mons get affected, or you you bring it to plus one and then your your Lando's out. Then as soon as you bring it back in, he's at you get the intimidate off, but he's gonna you're gonna have to take a thousand arrows, which is not gonna mm. be still there. Let's Hello. see about Jordan. Yeah. Uh Jordan, okay, yeah. So for Jordan, uh let me uh look at this battle. Uh Jordan played his best, but I feel as though that uh, uh and I feel like that Arthur had him in his hands the whole time, and there was nothing he could do uh, after the whole battle. And, and he did play his best, and like, and like actually make it a uh, uh, two-way loss, and against Arthur, uh, uh, who was like highly sort of recognized within our sort of community, and uh, and to be able to do that is, is amazing. Uh, uh, and that's the reason why for me uh, that uh, like uh, like he's above uh, uh, Chris and also Brennan. So and then it says Shay 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 Shay. Are you only here? 
because of being able to pull that comeback. Like, uh, I will admit, uh, you did actually pull your head out of your behind and and you got to work. It didn't need to do. Uh, there was some luck in your favor in that, uh, in, like, in terms of like move sort of choices, but it did your best and, and you were able to sort of come on top ah, and like, and I just didn't get that win. So, yeah. You want to go to Jordan now? So you're... Jordan, team? my commentary, uh, I, I can't really blame Jordan in this matchup. Mm. Uh, Arthur is really, really, really hard opponent. But Jordan only lost 2-0, which is really, really close. I got to admit, it was mm. a really close match. Um, it was just a few miscalculations on Arthur's side so that he... Jordan a bit and Jordan kind of like caught him off guard. Megan Gardner put in so much work that match. Um, but I can't blame Jordan in the sense that this is this is Arthur, which Arthur uses a, a lot of like for text. He uses his own style, and if he needs to, he can use other pokey tubers and whatnot. So I watch a lot of um, gym uh, Pokemon gym leader Geo, and I watch his matches versus Envy. And Envy had the GBA Tapu Coco. Geo had Duck Trio. So this is kind of the same scenario here. Envy brought Choice Scarf to Coco, which is what Arthur did. Mm. So he kind of took a page out of Envy's book here. Jordan doesn't like to go out and like uh, get out sources from, you know, out, out sources, I think yeah. that's called, and, and use yeah. that info. Like I knew about Scarf Coco, but he didn't. Mm. Uh, he doesn't know because he's, he's not out there uh, so much involved in the Pokemon community uh, with PokeTubers like that. I think yeah. it's more of a solitary player. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you can ever just consult and uh, try to get insight for for potential sets, that's always nice. Yeah. Was um. Yeah, that's the thing that caught him the golf guard the most because he thought it was an easy switch into Kartana. Coco was Scarf, and he had to take two hidden power ices, and Kartana doesn't have the special the best special defense. And yep. the best part of all was like, like there was he was, he had Mega Pidgeot left, so mm. Gar Garchomp or Stone Edge, you could have been landing Stone Edge for days and trying to potentially pull that back, mm. but just it's man, you really got to consult with other people for for potential, especially high tier players like that. Like Arthur, I, I usually for Arthur like that, I, I usually go to Brennan, I go to Steven, I, I I go to people and I ask. Hey, what do you think he might bring? What do you yeah. think he might do? But like, I need to know all the potential outcomes that he might come at me from, because you these are unpredictable players. They're not. They're not going to stick to the book. Yeah, definitely. And now we both have Mark at the number twelve spot. If you want to sort of say why. Uh, number twelve, Mark. Um, the biggest part was. He let down. He, he let go. Down, um, revolved around one Pokemon, and yeah. that was Tapu Bulu. Hmm. Tapu Bulu go down way too early. Definitely. Too early. As soon as Tapu Bulu went down, no checks from Mudsdale. Uh, as soon as Tapu Bulu went down, um. The him only was able to come in and eat whatever seed it had, probably gra grassy seed or something like that. Mm. But put in some work. Eventually, Halucha came in. I have had the same item, but no longer the grassy terrain. So I can't get an unburden boost and I can't get his defense boost. Boom. Like, mm. you lost the core of your team so early on that you had no means of no ways of coming back especially against a player like matt as yeah. soon as matt realized you you lost your blue he was like i got this guy in my hands yeah and you have to realize that you have to realize what are your win cons from the very beginning so you don't lose them that's it for me yeah in that match for matt yeah uh i'm i might say basically as soon as Bilo went down uh mm, Mark just lost it. I like there was nothing that he could do. Matt, and Matt like did what he needed to do, and he, and he like did it well. So there was, there was nothing that 
it's, there's nothing else that we like needed from that. But it was like my kind of failings in it was like second the it was like second the wrong one in a sense. And at number eleven, I actually had myself and 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 I'm only gonna say one thing. I was out prepped. That is all I'm gonna say. I was out prepped. And yeah. So if you wanna now go into trick. Trig, trig. Oh my god. I understand this is another high tier player, Carlos. We gotta take this into consideration. Yeah. But I kinda looked at Trig's team for week two. I really did that didn't like what he brought. Uh, if we look over the team real quick, we can see he has Murkrow, Mega Manectrite, Manectric, Clefable, Fortress, Zygarde 10, and Manti. So you only have two offensive threats, Mega Manectric and Zygarde 10%. Clefable, maybe, if it was Combine, but as we watched the match, we see it wasn't Combine. It was just a support set. I, all I saw was Wish and... Mm. And uh, protect. So you only have two mods to be hitting hard against Carlos, while Carlos had amazing prep. But really, brought two offensive mods. The rest was I don't know if they were type some type of gimmicks. I'm not sure if you were supposed to try to get hazards up, which I don't. I didn't see much hazard sacking. It was like Carlos really, really, really helped prep them. Um, I think Carlos does like to play a little more offensive so sometimes offense trick like I, I i think you're still trying to find yourself and that's understandable it's your first time in this league and whatnot but um same thing with like for like with shade try to research week one try to find out your opponent's play style a bit consult with other people try to find out information um because like Murkrow, like I really didn't understand why you brought Murkrow. Like, yeah. like what's gonna Murkrow gonna do here? And then to Lady like, Mo, it was sorry. stuff like, it was like that. Yeah. Lead, it was like I'm not I'm like Yeah. Draft Hodgecrow, not Murkrow, like hmm. I, I just, it's just stuff yeah. I'm like I said, he's probably still trying to find himself. Yeah, exactly. Completely understandable. But try try off offensively and then if you need to work to defensively i think that's how i start off offensively then i kind of added defensive and then i went to like yeah. support and all that yeah and now why am i at wow, number 10 oh yeah, okay, so you're at my number 10 um battle and it was it was more of a sense of lead like, yeah differently we could be talking a different game here legit a different game because you had to take... He let off with the choice specs, Rotom. Yeah. So that was like... The Vault Switch and blah, blah, all this nonsense and stuff like that. While if you had led Dar Darmanitan... Yeah. Darmanitan put work on his team. Like, okay. I, I looked at his week two. He had, what? Rotom, uh, Mo, Mega Beedrill, Starmie, Inferni, Nehugo, and Kling Clank. A mm -hmm. Flare Blitz threatened all of those mons. It did. I know. Threatened all those mons. And as you watched in your match, you went for a U-turn, and he easily switched into Starmie. Had you done that from the beginning, he and caught the Starmie or something like that, easily. Even a U-turn on the road on uh, Mo mm. would have been solid straight damage. Yeah. So it was uh, in a sense of lead. I can't wait to watch it too. Um, yeah, I do watch it. He's just... You really thought that uh, Top of Finney was a safe lead and all that, but um, with and I understand, but leads can really change the flow of a game. You can, in that sense. And what won in the battle? It was actually, it was like actually the scarf and the logo. If that was not scarfed, I had the game in the bag at the end. Uh, that was that was good prep on his side. Yeah, it was. Uh, but I, as mentioned, like if you had. Let off with that and mm. kept the other mods healthy because you, you did have uh Ferrothorn that week. So Ferrothorn walls. Yeah. It's an empower fire, but still like that would have been a nice check from the Hugo and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, beat wise that really caused you a lot of mayhem and for the match. Yeah. 
Uh, SMA number 10, uh, I actually have uh, Alejandro. And what I was doing behind this is, uh, he vs Anthony. Anthony's having the start of a season of his life, basically. Like, Anthony's playing really well. Uh, I actually did like a mock with Anthony. And and this was a, 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 a skunk tank put in work on his team. And with Tornadus, it was like, it was like regen. It worked out perfectly with the skunk tank. And because like any sort of fighting or like, or, or like ground attacks, uh, Tornadus, it can just take those easy in a sense. So, uh, Bid did his best, uh, but unfortunately, uh, Anthony just sort of outplayed him. Uh, he had a bit of prep and then counters that in Bid's sense, uh, there was no real fault uh, that I saw in it, and just for the fact that he couldn't really do anything to Anthony and he stole. Like, uh, he was just out stalled, basically. And number nine, I have Trig and and for, and for Trig, he was six owed, and for like my fact, uh, uh, he was in Carlos, and and be six owed by Carlos. I don't think it's him, but it doesn't mean much because because of how good Carlos is, and I should be six owed from him. I just have like a bad lead, uh, lost Trig the game. From turn one, and and unfortunately, he had the six zero, six zero, and there's a reason why that I haven't put him down as much as I probably should have, in a sense. Your week, your number Alejandro, nine. Alejandro, uh, number nine. Alejandro came in risking more biscuits. That man came in risking more biscuits, <laughs> which I loved and. Yeah, I really did love. I I love that tech of the Mega Venusaur holding block toxic. Mm. I mean, which was very. I mean, when I mean risking the biscuit, we're talking about a psychic type here. Super effective damage. Yeah. And you legit stayed in. Went for the toxic, knowing he. I don't know if you knew he didn't have psychic or he didn't have psychic shock. So, props to that. But. Um, I have here at number nine because I think he did play a solid match overall. He was up like I think was it five three or I think it was like five three at one point. I think it was four some three. Of, yeah, something like that. I know he was up. He was up. I think he lost because of one move. I think he lost because of one move. Mm. One stinking move, which was uh, it was the inf uh, um, the Infernape, uh, not Infernape, uh, the Incineroar versus the Heatran. Mm -hmm. Went for Dark Pulse when all he had to do was go for Earth Power and kill the Incineroar. So I, I really, I, I'm, under, I'm just trying to, I don't know if he misclicked or what, but as soon as that uh, Incineroar was able to go for the, the, the Drain Punch, get the kill, and eventually, as soon as Heatran went down, that, allowed, that opened the door for the Scarf. Or Torigamaru, which I probably should leave that for Antony's um, thing. Mm -hmm. um, sorry. But yeah, just the fact that that one misclick, that one misclick, he really, um, it was just a few hacks were against him. Like if you watch the match, a few hacks were hacks against him. Uh, he did play his stall the way he wanted to for the most part, but just that earth power misclick right there, mm -hmm. it's, that's really what just cost him the game. Definitely. He, he played well, he played well overall. It was just that one play. Hmm. So number eight, oh, uh, uh, it was basically the same for the whole top eight. So we'll just take in turns in a sense. Sure. So. So I'm at two. So I would probably yeah. do odds. Okay. So you do yeah. evens. I'll okay. Do odds. So for DJ, uh, this man out prepped me big time. Uh, he had the perfect lead. He just sort of played well, basically. Uh. From turn one, DJ knew what he had to do, although there was some unluck and we sort of my prep on his side. Uh, because I think that, uh, uh, with the cling clang, uh, he had him what a uh, plus two speed, plus two attack was was he? Plus two speed, one attack, yeah, one attack, yeah. Uh, uh, and I was like, enough, 
I just have a Pinchberry on my Feeny. Actually, I'm going to kill a, a, a the Kling Clang. If not for that, I would have been swept easily for the 6-0. In a sense. So, DJ had the had the prep. And he just sort of sort of executed the match really well. Oh, so, uh, DJ played well. And also prepped well. And, and he deserved the win. Basically. Alright, so then we have Brandon in number two spot in Moon Valley Me Too. Number two. Uh, Brandon, I, I really like uh, uh, the way Brandon came in this week. This week he he came in with a different um, different strategy. Like we saw, he, he actually added the Dragon Dance into Zygarde. Zygarde with Dragon Dance was able to help off his team so much more than what he was using week one. I think he really took um, some some pages of what he did wrong in week one hmm. and added it to week two um yo it was just it was a pretty solid match from him overall well, he brought that week yeah it was just overall i think the articuno is still something he might need to work out here yeah. as his defogger which he, he brought as a defogger yeah and that the potential spikes from Cle uh, clef q was something but overall he played a solid match really really solid um, it's uh, as we mentioned, he, he realized what he did wrong week one, brought it week two, actually learning from his losses, which is really, really good here. Mm. And it's gonna keep it's gonna allow him to keep moving up around the ranks. So, yeah, keep up the good work. Uh, and uh, and in number six, we have the unluckiest man of all this week, uh, Stephen. I what lost in the game, it was a freeze for how many turns? Oh, was he frozen? It was like three or four turns, About wasn't five. it? Yeah, five turns even, yeah. Uh, uh, that's what lost in the game. If not for that freeze, it would have been a much closer game than a 4 0 win, in a sense. So, so Stephen played perfectly. I've, uh, just for the fact that uh, it was frozen, and then also a miss on an overheat, I'm pretty sure. Yeah? And like, lost in the game. I said, I said there's nothing that we can do that Stephen, but he was unlucky for that. Uh, and that freeze and that miss stuffed him. Uh, Stephen played really well. I got up, uh, got up the sand, and he was actually running a uh, sand force, another sand rush active drill. Which, which did possibly hinder him with the speed aspect, but there's not much he could do with a freeze as it occurred. So, on to Lazy Ghost, Arthur. Lazy Ghost. Lazy Ghost came in. He came in for, for blood after that week one loss. A really close match. Uh, really got to give him props. He, he used. Um, this is right. He used, uh, as we mentioned, against um, Jordan. He brought this choice scarf, the choice scarf top of Boko, uh, for the most part being that he's gonna try to come in um, stuck. Like they like say, um, they both let off top of Goku and Doug Trio. He gets a safe U turn out, he breaks his sash. He can either bring in Skarmory, which avoids the, the ground type moves. So that was really, really solid prep. Yeah. Um, a few miscalculations but other than that he he did very very solid i think he wasn't as prepared for the um mega gardevoir uh gardevoir mm. did put in a lot of work mm. and get sticky webs up like he wanted to so that was kind of like so that the fact that gardevoir was at normal speed and sticky webs and it, it just caused a lot of mayhem yeah. especially the, the talon flame lead and he was like he was expecting just regular talent flame, not the uh, <laughs> life orb set. So he had the Cobra Berry, which is awesome. He had, he had the prep. I gotta admit, Arthur had the prep. Um, um, Jordan surprised him at moments, but he was able to maintain his cool throughout the game and pull that back. Especially uh, the hidden power ice towards the end was amazing because all he had left was uh, guard chomp. The Kartana and something else that was weak to ice and the Duck Trio. Yes, yeah. I think it was yeah. those three. So it was basically pretty awesome prep there, and especially to preserve your win con. 
um, to easily get that with a win at the at the end there. Mm, definitely. Arthur for that. Mm. And in number four, we have Matty Poo. And Matty played really well. Uh, best mark. Uh, I mean that Mudsdale. I that Mudsdale put in the absolute utmost work, basically. Uh, uh, I, uh, I think that... Was it was it this week or yeah it was this week uh does Mark of the no uh Mark of the Smeagol I uh, was transform week two yeah yeah and and actually ended up being uh, like a Mudsdale store wall uh, I I watched the point where uh, like uh, he and Mudsdale at uh, like plus six defense and I was taking like it, it just like uh, any any sort of physical hit, I just able to wall that basically, and uh, uh, Matt played beautifully, and there was nothing else uh, uh, that you could like ask from that. He was able to use uh, his whole team, and just to sort of contribute to the win, uh, uh, and to be able to pick up a crucial win against Mark basically. Now on to Anthony. Anthony in the number three spot. Uh, Anthony, uh, love there. He, he was able to pull through. I think I have commentary. I really do, especially for this match, especially the fact that he had to go up against Stahl. Um, not sure if he was as prepared for Stahl. I know he prepped for everything, which is mm. awesome. He did prep for everything. But, um, so good tomorrow, as I was mentioning for Anzoni. At the end there it was very very clutch very mm. clutch um as soon as mega Venus, i think mega venus sword and he, he tran went down he kind of opened up the door which is awesome he preserved it to the end he he had the um, what i did like was the, the parting shot uh parting shot so volley was really really it came in clutch um the Vile Plume with the uh, Sap Zipper, also very, very clutch there. Um, he had a clutch stuff, a lot of clutch moments for him. Uh, I know, like, eventually his down, team was dwindled down, and he was, he had the, he was behind the, against the wall. But uh, as soon as he was, he tried, he, he, he had the game in the back of the bag. Which was a complete 180. As soon as that heat tran went down, it was a complete 180. Um, Scarf Toto Gamaro was amazing prep to outspeed Tornadus. Mm. So I got a pro props for that. That was really, really, really smart for Antonio to do there. I think Tagamaro uh, So had... keep moving forward, Antonio. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, uh, I'm pretty sure that Tagamaro ended up with, uh, with, uh, with like four kills in the end. Pretty sure. So, uh, Angel played well, but in number two, uh, we have uh, your boy here, El Bison Squid, uh, and the luckiest player of all time uh, this week, basically. So, uh, uh, I was mentioned before, <laughs> not of all time, because uh, there have been some battles, but, uh, 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 that's not the point at the moment, but, uh, uh, this week, a uh, squid played really well. Uh, uh, he was like able to capitalize on his luck, basically, uh, and just be able to sort of, sort of take advantage of that freeze and also the miss from Rotom. Because I'm pretty sure that if the Rotom hit the overheat, it was taking down the Dragalgy, was it? Um, uh, no, was it? <laughs> wasn't okay. Well, and that's the matter. And just sort of like the chip damage, uh, because uh, you're able to use Trigology in the end. Uh, as like Mon, and uh, just sort of sack off if needed to. I uh, just get like a free switch in, and then to have the freeze from the was it the Gyarados or, or the or the Porygon two the freeze came Porygon from. Two. Yeah, the Porygon, Porygon two. two into the Mega Gallade was lucky, and and was actually able to. Let's good relax, calm down, and be able to do what was needed. I, I just sort of seal the win at that point, and 
and like to be able to take advantage uh, of that hacks against a really good player in Steven. So that's just a good match overall, and 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 good job to Squid. Did I mention safety goggles Dragology? Yeah, I completely forgot safety goggles Dragology from the was it a sleep powder from his. No, yeah, from spores. It, it prevents yes. all spores. Yes. Sleep powder. Both all from time. Amoongus, That's yes. That's amazing. Yes. Tech of the week there. Sandstorm. No sandstorm yep. damage. That was so clutch. Tech of the week there. Big time definitely from Squid. I completely forgot. Thank you for reminding me. And then we have number one. The best tech bringer of all times. Carlos. Yes. Carlos brought some of the amazing. It was just a match of all reads and tech. He had hidden power of fire on his Metagross for the Fortress from Trig. He had the hidden power of ice uh, for the Zygarde with his Zapdos, which Zapdos take a hit. Uh, Metagross was hold holding the Akaberry, so it was able to eat a hit from the Mega Manetric. The clear body prevents it from getting the Intimidate. He mm -hmm. gets a nice, safe um, Quake as the KO. It was just. He had the pro. Somehow, the pro. Carlos broke into Trig's house, <laughs> looked at his team, and said, All right, this is what he's bringing. I got this. I got this. It was just head to toe. Head to toe had him covered. Yeah. 100%. So that was, I got an amazing prep. Congratulations to, to Carlos on that. Um, Definitely. For, for doing so well week two like yeah i i have him on top of me just because he, he did so much better oh no, definitely i had some definitely. good tech but his tech was just on a different definitely. level carlos 100%. uh carlos, carlos is a is a threat at like watch this season definitely and for that reason and with this tech carlos for the second week in a row it is actually our ldl battle of the week carlos again mate same thing Hit up the Taylor TVG page, and I, and and just sort of click your prize, uh, and because you deserve it, mate. And that tech was just it throughout the whole battle. He played really well, played perfectly in a sense, and 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 there's no one else uh, that had like came close to your uh, your battle style this week. So in saying that, what well I mate, C uh, congrats. And, and also, good luck in week three. Anything you want to say before we close out the video, Squid? Well, players and trainers, you keep rocking. You guys are doing amazing this season. I'm, I'm really looking forward to competition. Everyone's doing amazing. Uh, a couple people that need to bounce back, but nothing that's impossible. Definitely. Week three is has a lot in store for you guys, so keep an eye out for that because that's gonna be awesome. So, and with that being said, I thank you for joining me, Squid. And this has been the Boy from Land and under Jetman99. Signing off and peace.